This podcast is brought to you in part by PNP Games, your online source for everything video games. Visit their website at pnpgames.com or at one of their three retail locations in Winnipeg, Manitoba. On this episode of the Nintendo Pulse podcast, we're going to be talking about birthdays, losses, and Mega Man, of course. Come join us and welcome to episode 86 of the Nintendo Pulse podcast. Alrighty, everybody, welcome to Nintendo Pulse 86. As I said, as always, I'm your host, Lloyd Hannison. And joining me, Steven, still has a Retron 5 in his house and is lording it over me, Mun. Steven, how does that fit <laughs> on your business card? It's, it's, um, I had to get a really, really long business card. <laughs> it's like five inches. It's, a, it's actually a Mobius strip. You just have to keep pulling it and reading around it for it yes. to Yes. Yeah, ah, that's cool. That's cool. Doesn't fit in anybody's wallet. <laughs> awesome. Well, how the heck you been, man? Uh, I've been pretty good. Um, lots of gaming this week. Um, how about you? Um, I've been good. I've been really busy. I got a f- little bit of gaming in. Um, been playing some stuff on my Vita because it's in my pocket, uh, which has been good. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the game that I've been playing uh, when we get into what we've been playing. But uh, yeah, other than that, I, it's just we're in crunch time right now at work on a bunch of projects. So unfortunately, my gaming time is taking a big dive. I hope that will uh, change in the near, near, near future, which will be good. Cool. Which will be good. That would be good if you can get some more gaming. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, let's get into this one. Uh, as always, this is a Nintendo Pulse podcast. We're talking about all things Nintendo, the, the week's news um, in the Nintendo world. We'd love to hear from you guys. Let us know what you think of the show. Head on over to VG Podcasts. Uh, click contact us at the top of the page or click on the leave a voicemail on the side of the page. And uh, you can do just that. You can email us at VGPodcast at gmail.com or you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, Steven's no longer on Twitter. It's an evil place for him, so don't try to follow him there. He does not exist. Any Stevens <laughs> you find are just a, a, a poor, poor imitation. Uh, but you can follow me on Twitter at, at DazMe or the network as a whole at VGPod. And just uh, another announcement before we get f- uh, full on into the show. Uh, last week, we launched a new website, uh, DisneyInfinity.tv. As you guys know, I've been a, a co-host on Disney Infinity for a while now. Um, joined together with uh, Will and Jason, the the other owners of that property. And we have a huge team of, of really, really great guys that are working with us to build this thing up. And if you are at all uh, interested in Disney Infinity, um, I urge you to go check that out. Uh, it's, it's a really great site. It has all the news, all the info you want. Um, but even better, it has a online checklist. So you can add all your characters, all your power discs. If you have doubles, you can enter doubles and put them on for trade. Other people, if they're looking for those discs, they can meet you. All that fun stuff. Uh, it's all happening um, over at DisneyInfinity.tv. Uh, a lot of podcasts and other stuff are happening there as well. So I do urge you to check it out. And we have some some amazing things planned for the near near future so if you're at all interested in marvel if you're at all interested in disney or disney infinity i urge you to head on over there and check it out cool i'm actually thinking about picking up uh 2.0 oh i ordered the uh the collector's edition man yeah you mentioned that to me last week that's a little crazy it's uh i i want it i want it today and i just want to I want to have it in my hands. It looks so damn good. So I'm uh, I, I can't wait. You're, you're going to love it. Like if, if you've watched any of the gameplay, it's actually a game now. Like there's a skill tree. There's character progression. There's choices that you have to make. It's not just go shoot people with fun things and, uh, and rubber mallets. It's uh, it, it's actually a game game, which uh, Disney Infinity one was was gamey. But uh, this one has taken it uh, the this, this step further so um, the best part is if you go and sign up on that site in the first 30 days you get a, a nice little uniquely banded pro or, or bad badge uh, profile thingy it's like a power disc badge but it's going to be uh, uniquely branded that you're one of the first um, vips that have been there in the first 30 days so uh, it'll be cool down the road when there's hundreds and thousands of people there there's going to be just a, a few of the of the vips that will be around to do that so do cool. check it out. Yeah, gonna um, have to. Kyle K in the chat room's asking what system I ordered it for. PS4, man. It's uh, that's the best version of the game, so I can't wait to pick it up on that. Got a cat over here who's uh, trying to destroy my uh, sensor bar for my 
uh, Wii U. All right. Do you want to go take it, take care of that while I jump into what I'm playing? <laughs> I think you're going to have to because uh, you just out of reach here. Hang okay, on. sure. All right, well, let's uh, let's jump into the show. We're going to get into what we've been playing. Uh, Steven, of course, has played the Wrangle the Cat uh, game, which, uh, which is fun. Um, oh, it looks like Steven is back from the wrangle the cat game so he's back so that's cool but um for me i have to get some compressed air <laughs> <laughs> just get an air just hit her with it when she gets up there yeah that would work um i've been playing a, a, a new game uh that just came out on the playstation platform um so it's not nintendo related but it reminds me so much of shovel knight uh which makes it uh that much more cool it's a game called rogue legacy and it is a roguelike metroidvania game so a uh, roguelike being um, you basically are trying to travel deep into a dungeon and when you die, you're done. You're dead. You basically die. And uh, then you take on the role of one of your uh, one of your siblings and then they continue on and uh, they, they get all the gold that you collected and then they can use it to buy other skills and upgrades and items. Um, but you can't take your, your gold into the game. So you have to spend all the gold that you got the last playthrough and then jump in and play again. Um, so it's this, this system of like quick deaths and like running in, doing something stupid, dying. But you but you made a couple hundred gold. You go unlock a skill, go back, make it a little bit further. Um, really fun. It, it, it reminds me so much of like a Castlevania Symphony of the Night type um, level layout and graphics. It looks like Shovel Knight in some areas. It's it's really stylized. Um, but the, the the best part about this game is the fact that um, that when you when you die the characters that you pick all have these character traits um, and they're random. So they can have like um, they, they could have uh, balding, which doesn't do anything. They could have uh, what is it? Low, low blood to feet syndrome. I, there's like a name for it. So you can have that. And what that means is if you have that, you can't feel your feet. So none of the spike traps will trigger because you can't feel your <laughs> feet anyway. So as you're walking through, they just don't trigger. Uh, you could be um, you could have uh you can't see uh, 3D stereoscopic vision, so all the sprites in the game, when they turn, they actually flip like a Paper Mario. Um, you could be colorblind, so so the game is black and white. Um, you could be, um, you could have um, gigantism, so you're twice as hot, twice as tall, or you could have dwarfism, so you're half as tall. So all these things are random, and um, and some of them are good, some of them are bad. Um, like there's one where you have um, you have glaucoma. So you can't see very you like all around you. Uh, you're kind of like nearsighted all around you. It's blurred out. There's this big circle around you that's blurred out, but everything else is clear. And then there's the opposite where you can't see you, you have, you're nearsighted. So you can only see in front of you and then everything else kind of fades out to black. Huh. Um, there's this one where everything is reversed. So you're actually walking forward on the top of the screen because um, everything's reversed upside down like you took the screen and flipped it um, so your controls are all flipped and it's just oh, like weird. this weird combination of like risk reward um, playing through um, so good uh, but the reason why I've been playing this and the reason why I'm mentioning it now is because Nintendo needs to do this um, when I bought it it was like $16 or whatever but it's cross play enabled so I'm playing it on my PS4 and my Vita and what it does is when it saves the game, it uploads a save to the cloud. So I could be playing on my Vita, um, like on the bus or whatever, or upstairs or whatever I'm doing, playing on my Vita. Um, I die. It saves my game to the cloud. I put my Vita away. Then I go downstairs, turn on my PS4. I pick up. It loads the latest save. And I'm playing the exact same game with no delays. And I only had to pay it for it once. Um, basically doing this, it's like, this is what Nintendo needs to do. This is like a very Nintendo concept, like playing the same game, doing the same thing on multiple consoles. Um, it just it, playing this and seeing how well it works, because like, I've done crossplay before. A lot of it's been really janky. Some of it hasn't worked so much. Um, but playing this one, it's been seamless and 100 percent. So um, Canon Shane says, what game am I talking about? It's Rogue Legacy. Um, so it's been out for a while uh, on the PC, but it just came out on uh, PlayStation platforms. But um, yeah, like Nintendo needs to do this. They need to do it with like the next Mario game. So you buy Super Mario 3D World 2 and you get a version on the Wii U. But then there's also a version that unlocks on the 3DS and you can play it on your 3DS, save to the cloud. Everything gets linked like it just it's such a Nintendo concept and it just it, it just screams to me to be something that Nintendo has to do. So while it's not a Nintendo game, it should be 
like the concept should be a Nintendo concept. So I don't know. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Do you think Nintendo is ever going to do something like this? Or are they too much about you're buying a game and you buy it once for this platform and it doesn't go on any other systems because that's not how we work? I'm I'm not sure. I mean, I can't see them doing something like what Rogue Legacy is doing there. Mm. Um, because, you know, not with their own games. Because I think that Nintendo has more of a focus on having each of their consoles be separate entities. Sure. Um so that there's a reason to own each one. And one of the reasons people aren't buying PlayStation Vitas is because they can play all those same games on their PS3. And hmm. they pretty much already have a PS3. There's really no compelling... There's not that many compelling reasons to own a Vita when you can just get those same games on the PS3 instead. Yeah. Um, and I think that the same <laughs> kind of thing would probably happen if Nintendo started making all their games come out on or many of their games come out both on 3DS and Wii U, yeah. um, it'd be one less reason to buy a Wii U. I, I, I think the, the reason why Vita didn't sell is because there was no good games on the Vita. And <laughs> and Sony decided to counter that to make... They, they started remote play way after the Vita came out. Like, they had, mm-hmm. had cross-save support, but this, yeah. like, cross-buy and cross-play was kind of a new concept and it was only after the Vita wasn't selling. Um, so this is a yeah. newer concept and it's it's basically what they're trying to do is make the Vita a peripheral for your PS4. And that totally mm-hmm. makes sense. Um, it, it makes sense that I'm buying this thing to remote play my PS4 games on my Vita and also some games are coming out and I get a free copy on my Vita when I buy it for the PS4. Yeah. Um, I, for Nintendo, I mean, the the handheld is such a, a huge market. I don't ever see people saying, well, I don't need a handheld now. I, all my, I'm only buying the game that appears on the console, so I might as well just play it on the console. It's the same version on the handheld. I think yeah. giving giving people the ability, like, it was nice having the gamepad and being able to, to play the game while someone else is watching TV. I mean, it's not such a great idea always. Like, you want to play on a big screen sometimes, even, e- even when you're on the gamepad you just want to play on the big screen but i could see that if it if i was able to take that with me and i was playing the same game while i'm away from my house not on the gamepad playing it on my 3ds i mean that is such a hugely awesome idea um i don't know i i really wish nintendo would do this i i hope this yeah. is in this is in the cards for the future and i mean some a third party did in 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 europe there's that squids odyssey or whatever um that was yeah. the, kind of the first uh attempt at it i don't believe it had cross save support but at least it was you bought it on the wii u you got the 3ds version for free um hopefully that is something that will uh that will happen um in the near future but i don't know if you have a vita and a ps4 just check out rogue legacy look how seamless that experience is and you can't help but like just think nintendo when you're playing it like it just it's such a nintendo way of of doing things it's it's easy it just works um which is really really awesome cool yeah i'm definitely i definitely like the idea of cross buy so that when a game actually does exist on both platforms you could buy it on one and own it on both especially like virtual console stuff yeah i just uh i just think the platforms are too different they're too far apart from each other yeah, yeah. I, I mean, so I, I totally... they have to really simplify the games in order to get them to run on both. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's the next 3DS. Maybe it's going to be yeah. the, 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 the yeah. Game Boy Next, and it will have one screen, but a big screen, so you can play 3D, DS and 3DS titles on it, or you can play it sideways. Like, maybe there's a way to do it, and then it's one screen, which would emulate your TV. It'd be like a 1080p or 720p screen held sideways, and then mm-hmm. you could do do that with um, with some games that would also be playable on your Wii U, or who knows if the Wii U is even going to be around in a couple of years? Like with the way that it's selling, who, who knows if something else <laughs> is going to come out from Nintendo? Like who really knows? But this whole cross play thing is just such an amazing experience. I I really hope Nintendo tries to do something very similar to that. Anyway, I'm stepping off my soapbox, uh, Stephen. <laughs> what what have you been playing? Uh, a ton of Dragon Quest Nine. Nice. Um, I have a DSi XL, and uh, I've been playing it almost nonstop uh, to the point where my kid is screaming at me um, <laughs> <laughs> and getting sent to her room uh, so I can play more Dragon Quest Nine. Oh no! Um, oh no! <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it's nuts. I mean, just like hours every day. I'm I think I'm right, almost right at the end now. Um, it looks like everything's kind of coming to the end, to an end. Sure. Um, which is neat. Uh, 
I, I really like the Dragon Quest. Oh, this cat is driving me crazy. She never is like this, except when I'm doing a show. That's, it's probably because she hears me talking. That's probably it. Yeah. Um, or maybe big fan maybe of the Dragon Quest Maybe it's because you're not and, playing Dragon Quest right now. So you, it's like, <laughs> I finally get some attention. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I'm really, I really like the game. I think it's really, really good. Um, hmm. You know, very few complaints about it. I was apprehensive before it came out about the, um, the, tight integration of multiplayer into it right. but i haven't done any multiplayer at all and it's been perfectly fine I've been playing the whole thing single player it's great mm. um although i would like to try the multiplayer sometime i have to see what i can do about that because the you know a lot of the content from the game is no longer available because the nintendo wi-fi connection was shut off and you need that for access to the dlc and everything right right so, yeah so yeah, uh, that and uh, I played some uh, Dragon Warrior 3 ga- on Game Boy Color on my Retron 5. And I played uh, some Animal Crossing New Leaf. I've started playing that again on my 3DS. Hmm. Um, hmm. Uh, my daughter had some needed some help with something in her town. So I started it up and I was like, oh, I miss my town. And I started <laughs> playing a little bit. And, you know, it's starting up again. <laughs> You've pulled all the weeds and gotten all that taken care of. Yeah, well, I have the beautiful town ordinance, so ah. it's uh, uh, I haven't had any issues with weeds. There only were maybe two in there after I didn't touch it for a few months. Nice, nice. So that was pretty good. Hmm, but yeah, almost entirely Dragon Quest Nine. Nice. Well, I it's a good game. Hey, would you would you want a Retron Six that has a DS card slot? Would that be of interest to you at all? I have been uh, thinking about that a lot. Hmm. I think that would be really really cool, but. Um, Considering the DS needs two screens, I don't know how they would do that. Yeah, if you've ever watched any gameplay, um, you can have the big screen really big on your on your screen, oh, yeah, and then you put true. the other one in the corner. Um, but then it's like the whole touchscreen thing. How how they get around that? They would have to come up. Well, they wouldn't have to spend that much money because the like you everybody knows the tech that Nintendo uses on the on the bottom screen, the single touch like ancient uh, technology would be really cheap to put into something like a like a, a touchpad in the middle um, but then yeah. yeah not be able to see what you're tapping on would be kind of difficult but yeah. I, i've often thought about playing a ds game on my tv it would be kind of cool to do that um i don't know maybe in the future yeah i <clears throat> you know I, when I, a lot of times when i'm playing dragon quest 9 i'm wishing that i could play it on the big screen hmm. um and another thing that's been bugging me this week is that uh, I really want to play Dragon Quest VII on my 3DS. Um, you know, they released that in Japan in, I think, in 2012 now. And there has been no announcement about it coming over here. And a lot of people are figuring it's never going to. And that's kind of a bummer. I mean, I have Dragon Warrior Seven for PlayStation 1. I didn't want to play it because I'm waiting for the remake to come out. Right. Um, but now I'm starting to wonder maybe it's not going <laughs> to. So. Your cat's destroying things. She is. She's, She's like eating paper right now. It's like she is. She's ripping up paper. Hey, hey, look at that. Look at that. That's more fun. Laser pointer on the ground. Yeah. I guess not. If, if I had a litter box in the basement, I'd just put her in the basement. <laughs> solve that problem. Oh, boy. Boy, boy, boy. All right. Well, let's uh, jump. Let's jump right into the show then. Let's get into mm-hmm. deals. Uh, why don't you tell us about some stuff where you can save some money uh, because you're going to be buying new furniture in the near future? I, I, I think I am. Um, yeah, hang on. I gotta go closer in the other room. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna jump into the sales. Um, we'll get into that on Amazon uh, this week. Uh, you can pick up uh, Mario 3D Land. You can pick up New Super Mario Brothers 2 and Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D for twenty five dollars each, uh, which is a pretty good savings. Um, Fifteen dollars uh, for most of those. Uh, Mario Party Island Tour is twenty three dollars on Amazon, which is a pretty decent price. And Mario Golf World Tour is $26 on go. on Amazon. So the money that you're saving buying Mario Golf World Tour on Amazon, you could buy the season pass and it would come to basically what retail is for that game. So um, pretty decent sales on Amazon. Um, w- what's for sale right now on the eShop, Stephen? Uh, Atlas is uh, still going through and discounting a lot of their games. I found four of them on there that are newly discounted. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor Overclocked is down to 15. Hmm. Code of Princess is 15. Shin Megami Tensei 4 is 15. Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner Soul Hackers is 15. Those are all half price. And I think they have some other games on there that are half price as well. Uh, There was one, I think, that was 40. 
Hmm. Uh, I forget what that game was, but now it's down to 20 on there. So really, nice. really good price. That is a pretty good sale. Um, yeah. Um, I, I played uh, Shin Megami Tensei 4 and dug it, but not enough to really get through it. I, I think I kind of gave up early on in, into the game. Um, but the, I mean, 15 bucks is a pretty good. I might like Coda Princess always kind of uh, maybe kind of curious about it. I might have to look into that a little bit more. And if it's something I want to play, maybe pick it up while it's on sale for 15 bucks. Mm-hmm. or 17 27 or whatever it is going to be with the stupid <laughs> Canadian conversion yeah. they it's so weird like you'll a game will be 399 in the u.s and it's like 421 in canada it's like really <laughs> you can't do round <laughs> numbers you can't do like 429 or 450 like i'll pay more just to have round numbers it's just it's so weird <laughs> nintendo is weird um but yeah that's uh some pretty good deals yeah they are i, I was surprised i'm getting starting to get surprised at some of the deals on the on the eShop. Um they these are actually these fifteen dollar prices are actually they're probably better than the prices for buying retail copies on Amazon, which is pretty nice. I mean I think Shin Megami Tensei 4 is probably still full price there. I think that, that yeah. the retail box for that is uh is actually kind of scarce. Yeah, because it, it had that special edition with the book and all that stuff, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, it, I mean so, yeah. It, it was tough to find right after release. I know I bought it new and then it kind of just dried up everywhere because of all that extra stuff that was included in it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on past sales. Let's get into news. Um, it, it seems like we just did this, Stephen. We sung a really poorly worded happy birthday song to the Game Boy. Actually, we didn't sing happy birthday, but we could have. Um, but it's, it's <laughs> now happy birthday again to the Game Boy. The Game Boy is again 25, and that is the the date um of the north american release uh which was today 25 years ago today this is twice that we've done a podcast on the actual birthday of the game boy the first one was the japanese version and now it's the american version and um yeah it's uh it's pretty cool here i'm gonna i'm gonna bring up an image here on the screen if you give me a second um which will be you don't have a like a gray Game Boy to hold up. Or? I, I I was I meant to dig mine out before the show, but I was watching football. We should have both done that. Mine's upstairs. Yeah, I have I have my <laughs> great I have a couple of great Game Boys actually, and I have um I have my Game Boy Color and all I have all my Game Boys, but uh, yeah, the gray Game Boy was was so nice. I I love that system so so much. So here, let me you see the hand painted ones on uh, tiny cartridge. Yeah, that yeah, was nice. With the flowers on them and stuff. Yeah, I. I love I love the Game Boy. That was such an awesome system when it came out. I, I had s- spent so much time with it. I'm trying to bring up a big version of this image, and it's not loading for whatever reason, which is really unfortunate because I have it here. So let's just see if I can drag it in. There it is. So here we go. This is the original ad that appeared. Uh, a pie in the face of flight, delays, long commutes, and endless campaign speeches. And... They tried to sell it to not just kids, but to adults as well, <laughs> which was really kind of bizarre. Nintendo marketed something called the Game Boy to people that were flying and in business and stuff. It was a, it was a really weird ad, but I remember seeing this one way back in the day and other ones that were very similar to it. So, wow, 25 years, Game Boy, welcome back to the, the limelight. May you bask in it for a few days well before people forget about you again and 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 forget about how hard it was to look at your green four color screen which gave me migraines <laughs> but oh, uh, wow. i had so much fun with i didn't give me migraines but it gave it made my eyes feel like they had bees inside of them when i was playing it at night like it was just mm. so hard to uh, focus on when it was that late and i remember putting all the the crazy weird contraptions on top of it the magnifying glasses <laughs> and the different lights and just to, so you could actually play when it wasn't like perfect like like golden hour <laughs> outside where you have the light yeah. just perfect um, i remember all that stuff and it was just yeah it was such a great system um this ad that i was showing off um talks about golf f1 race tennis baseball and tetris back when games had one name and it was the thing that it was you played golf <laughs> Or you played bowling, or you played boxing. There was there was no fun back when Mario was just called jump. <laughs> exactly, it was <laughs> called pipe pipe jump jump pipe guy kill yeah. 
kill the crabs um, was what it was. But then they had to remove that because they've had kill in the name and that was very un Nintendo for it. So Yes. Yeah, the Japanese version was called Kill. The American version was called Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice the crabs. Yeah, that's yes. great. <laughs> and then you nice those. Yeah, and then you, they nice right over. You, you put them to sleep. They're tired. They want a nap. Yes. Yeah, you jump on them and put them down for a nap. But it's um, crab nap. Crab nap. That's probably that, that. If you went on Urban Dictionary, that probably is something. So I was thinking the same thing. We, we won't. We won't. Let's uh, not look up crab nap. We will not go any deeper into that. So happy birthday, Game Boy. Twenty five years. You don't look a day over twenty four and a bit. Um, yes. But I, I love the system, actually, so I, I can't say that. I, I had so much fun with that system, so it's going to be a classic. doesn't matter how old I am. Even my yeah. kids like the Game Boy, which is weird. Like, my son likes playing Game Boy, but, which is, like, weird because things have, like, four pixels, and he's okay with on it. On the original on, system? On the original system, yeah. Yeah, he's, See, I still play Game Boy games on my Retron 5. So. Yeah, well, mm, I like Retron name dropping my Retron 5. Uh, yeah, I have a Retron 5. Oh, you're breaking up again, Steven. It's weird, just like last <laughs> week. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's get into uh, uh, the Nintendo news of the week. This is the big one. Uh, Nintendo announced their uh, their financials, the quarterly uh, financials ending June 30th. And um, they recently confirmed what everybody had speculated, that they, in fact, did have a loss. So despite Mario Kart 8 um, selling um, 2.82 million, which is almost 3 million copies of a game, um, Nintendo lost ninety seven point two million dollars, which is less than like the multi hundred million dollar losses they've had recently. But it's still it's really surprising to me that they in a quarter where they sold three million copies of a game that probably didn't have that high of an R and D value. I mean, it would have had a lot of people working on it, but Nintendo doesn't staff up and then fire like most companies do. So it was like all projected um, costs for for their development. Mm-hmm. They still lost almost a hundred million dollars in a quarter. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Um, what is it? The company shipped five hundred ten thousand units of the Wii U between April and June. So better than it has sold, but yeah, still five hundred five hundred thousand. Crazy. Yeah. Adam points out marketing money as well, and it's true. They had all those. Uh, <clears throat> Smash Brothers events and everything like that. Yeah, it could be that. Maybe Nintendo's um, marking off the um, the the free games as as a loss, so they're they're marking it mm. off, so it it looks better on their financials. So they're they're taking a loss on the sales. Um, they're deferring that money or whatever. Could be mm. doing some weird accounting stuff like that. So maybe the next quarter is going to be crazy. Um, maybe I don't know. Maybe they, they're still they're still projecting that they're gonna <clears throat> they're gonna post a a, a, a profit. Uh, this year um, based nice. on Smash Brothers and everything else that they have coming out. So yeah. we'll see. Let's hope. Um, but like it's been said many times, Nintendo could not make any money for the next 25 years and they have enough money in the bank where it, it would be okay for them. So yeah. this isn't like, oh my God, Nintendo's going to sell out to EA <laughs> or Microsoft. <laughs> like that's not going to happen. Um, yeah. But yeah, it is still kind of sad. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to see this uh, turn around. We'll, we'll see what happens. Definitely. Cool. All right, let's move on. Um, it was announced this month on the Capcom Unity blog that August is Mega Man month, um, which is weird. I don't know why August is Mega Man month, but it is. And basically what they're doing is every week they're releasing a new uh, Mega Man game on the Nintendo Virtual Console. So the first week of August, Mega Man 5. Second week, Mega Man 6. Third week, Mega Man X3. And the last week of August will be Mega Man Battle Chip Challenge for the Game Boy Advance. So, yeah, Mega Man. Every Thursday in August, back to school, fun, playing old games on the virtual console. And they already released a Battle Network for GBA. Yeah, they did. That's right. That was the other so, one. Today, I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's Mega Man. Um, yeah, they're doing it again didn't they do this uh they did this in like february i want to say like it, like that, it yeah. wasn't that long ago um Mega Man games in one month. i guess it worked for them um but personally for me i 
I can't go back and play those old Mega Mans on Virtual Console. I, I dig out my old cartridges. Uh, I have a couple of the Mega Man games. I can't remember. I think I have one and three, I think. Or maybe it's two and three. I can't remember. Um, I actually saw someone locally that was selling one to six, and they wanted like $200 for them. <laughs> just for like, just the cartridges? Just for the cartridges. They're expensive. I think Mega Man 6 alone is like $100 loose or something. It's huh. it's crazy. But um yeah, I don't like Mega Man that much to spend that kind of coin on it, but I did have a I lot have of Mega fun. Man 2 cartridge. Uh, the rest of them I have in the collection on Game uh, GameCube. I'm going to see. Mega Man 6 loose cart prices. I think it's like price charting or whatever is the website. Yeah, video games dot price charting. Uh, yeah. Okay, no, Mega Man. Oh, that's Mega Man X. That's not what I typed in. I said Mega Man. Man 6. You son of a gun oh no loose price is only 39 dollars it's 40 dollars so it's not Mega Man 6 maybe it's 5 I can't remember but one of them is worth decent okay Mega Man 5's were 70 loose this is great podcast material um 30 dollars for four okay I thought I thought one of them was worth 100 dollars maybe they've dropped in price because people started selling them or whatever um but yeah still um I I still won't pay five dollars for the virtual console version. I'd rather yeah. own the cartridge. So, yeah, yeah, cool. So, if you like Mega Man, uh, the the virtual console is going to be your stop for the month of August. Don't all run at the same time and crash the servers. I know, no, you will. <laughs> no, you won't. All right, moving on. Um, it was announced uh, a while ago, but it was confirmed uh, this week that the NES Remix Pack will, in fact, be coming to U.S. stores as a disc. Um, that you can buy and it'll be put together and it's going to be available in the holiday season which is crazy because the games are on the Wii shop right now uh, or the the eShop right now and they should just if they're going to do it they should just put it in stores right now because people are going to be mad when they get this for Christmas and they've already bought the versions themselves <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah, I mean, I guess I guess it's coming, but it's not coming till the end of the year. I don't know. What are your thoughts, Stephen? You have um, NES Remix 1, yes. correct? Would you buy a disc version just so you could have two and something collectible to put on your shelf? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm, I actually plan to buy this um, because it's got, not only will, I, will it give me both of the games, but it has some extra content in it as well. Yeah. And it also... Um, the uh, Nintendo World Championship around. mode. Yeah, it also gets around the 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 digital issue. Mm, yeah, you can move it from one system to another. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm in the same boat as you. I, I want to see what it's going to be like. What the actual price is going to be? It's rumored that it's going to be thirty five dollars. Um, that sounds like a really weird price. Um, uh, yeah, and really high. Well, yeah, because it's they're they're fifteen dollars each on the eShop, and you think Nintendo would charge you a little bit more for the disc? Like, uh, was it New Super Luigi? you or whatever wasn't it almost ten dollars more to buy it on disc than it was to buy it digitally That's true yeah it was so i mean it, maybe it's 40 maybe it's 35 um personally i think 29.99 will be where it launches at um i would love to see it at 19.99 but i don't think nintendo would ever do that unfortunately yeah yeah that's wow well, that's you know that's enough that seems really high yep yeah, yeah. I, i'm probably gonna end up buying it as well um be just because i want to have uh, this um i was really disappointed that um, for the Club Nintendo prizes, they gave away the first one, not the second one. I was kind of hoping yeah. that they would give away the second one, but uh, it was not. That would have be. been good because I probably would have grabbed it. I, I would have totally grabbed that instead of uh, a Wario game that I won't ever play. But it was forty dollars, so it added up for my uh, deluxe digital deluxe promotion. So I got uh, f- four hundred points there that I could use towards a five dollar credit. <laughs> Uh, Because I'm a cheap bastard. That's kind of what I did. I picked a game I won't play because all the other good games I already own. Yeah. As I'm sure most people did. They should have just given us an eShop credit. That would have made way more sense. Spent it on whatever the hell we want. Exactly. All right, moving on. Uh, I know you're a big Pokemon fan, Steven. So you're going to... Gosh, here we go again with you telling me I'm a Pokemon fan. You are. You you (laughs) tell me that all the time. You email me every day. I, I really... I'm a closet Pokemon fan. I really like Pokemon. And I say, no, Stephen, no. And you say, yes, yes, it is. Uh, but if you head on over to uh, tw- 
Um, that was weird. Anyway, if you head on over to uh, twitch.tv <laughs> slash twitch plays Pokemon, uh, it's back with something new. Uh, they are actually playing Pokemon X now on Twitch plays Pokemon through a hacked system. I don't even want to begin to understand what is happening, but they are doing it. I'm watching it right now. They are playing Pokemon X on the system. It's really bizarre. But um, it's there. So um, how many people are watching it right now? 2,000 people are watching it right now and interacting. Steven has nothing to say. I'm, go- I'm going to look to see. Yeah. They're playing. There's a bird. The bird is flapping. They are choosing things, and they're putting in coordinates and characters. <laughs> they're, they're picking the same Pokemon over. Oh, they have Xerneas or Xerneas or Xerneas or whatever. They have that already? I don't even have that. The the hive mind of the internet in less than a week has gotten one of the legendary Pokemon. That's crazy. <sighs> anyway, <coughs> excuse me. Twitch Plays Pokemon, playing Pokemon X, available now. Wherever we find Pokemon X, Twitch Plays Pokemon stores are sold. Yeah. Yeah. I have nothing to say about this. It's just to me it's fascinating, but it's not a game that I would ever want to watch people play. <laughs> right. Like the whole crowd m- mind hive uh, of mm-hmm. playing a game is super fascinating. There's going to be awesome papers written about it over the next few years, but I don't want to watch someone play Pokemon. I'd I'd rather watch them play something else. Like maybe a different RPG even would be fun. But um, I just, I don't want to watch the, the Pokemon thing. But it's working for him. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, getting big numbers in for Twitch. <clears throat> big numbers for Twitch, and I'm sure these guys are making a uh, hefty coin through ad revenue share. I wonder how many copies of Pokemon X Nintendo is selling as a direct result of this. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder why, if Nintendo's thinking of doing, like, DMCA takedown requests and and like they do with YouTube, we want to own this video so that we can sell ads and we'll give you 30%. Mm. Um, that type of thing. Honestly, that would be that'd be a bad idea. It would be very bad. But Nintendo, I'll just leave it there. Yes. All right. <laughs> Here we go with that again. Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've seen that, the, the ASCII of the guy going like this. That's the Nintendo <laughs> thing now. Is, uh, oh, okay. is that. That's like, hmm, Nintendo. It's, yeah. That's kind of what they do. All right. Uh, last but not least uh, for you this week, uh, Nintendo has announced that they're going to have a Nintendo Direct. Uh, it's going to be airing on the 4th, uh, so Monday, this coming Monday. And it's going to be all about Hyrule Warriors. So I know, Stephen, we were talked while well, you were talking before the show um, that you are not at all interested about this game. I'm yeah. cautiously optimistic and I'm really kind of curious about it. So I kind of want to see more about the game not just screenshots of a hundred different enemies um and a link standing there slicing them all down at once i want to see more of what the game is if, is it really just destiny warriors with a skin on it or have they done other stuff to make it more hyrule uh, or more zelda e or linky um if not i mean it'll just be a pass but if they've made steps to make it more than just dynasty warriors it might be something that i want to pick up just for some some hack and slash fun um but yeah if you want to find out more about it it'll be available this monday the 8th of august which it's scary that august is already upon us um at 8 p.m uh pacific time so they're doing an evening one for some reason so i guess probably because of the time they maybe they want to have it simulcast in japan and, and north america um but uh yeah there you go it's uh hyrule warrior steven is very excited he's almost he almost likes hyrule warrior, warrior as much as he likes pokemon so um he's gonna buy three copies i think <laughs> that does sound like something i would do <clears throat> it does it does totally all right man well that's gonna about do it for this episode um unless you have anything else to add no i it was a Light week. Some mm-hmm. big news, but not a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Sorry, so take a sip of water. Um, yeah, I think most of the news was kind of drowned by Nintendo reporting that $100 million loss. Yeah. 
I think that scared a lot of people away. They don't want to have, hey, look, we're releasing something on Nintendo. And then Nintendo reports a loss and they're like, oh, crap. (laughs) Maybe (laughs) we shouldn't have put that out before the loss. Maybe we should put it out after the loss is maybe something that will bring Nintendo back from the brink or whatever. However, they can spin it in their marketing. I don't know about that, though, because I think that I think that those companies, the companies that are that would, you know, that would make and sell software on the Wii U or the 3DS, I don't think they really care too much whether Nintendo is profiting or losing. Um, I think what matters to them is units sold, and that's up on the Wii U. Sure. So that's good news. It's like way up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that that's probably you know more likely the thing. But I think the thing that's going to matter the most to them is how much money they themselves are making <laughs> on the system. <laughs> and yeah. I don't think that we've seen a whole lot of companies making a lot of profit on the Wii U yet. So... Mm-hmm. I know Ubisoft was at first, but I don't think anyone else really has. And I don't think Ubisoft will be continuing that. Yeah, at all. They've stopped. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, um, yeah, let me turn that down. We'll put some music on. That's going to about do it for this episode of the Nintendo Pulse, episode 86. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, let us know what you think. Head on over to vgpodcast.com. You can click contact us at the top of the page or just go to the side and click leave us a voicemail to do just that. Uh, you can go to our forums, vgpodcast.com slash forums, uh, or call our voicemail line, which is area code 505 VG Podcasts. I'm Dazmi on Twitter. Steven is I am not Steven on not Twitter. It's a it's a it's a new <laughs> a new version of Twitter that he's writing for himself that only he uses. So it's very interesting. You won't be able to follow him there. But um, do you think you're gonna come back, Steven? Ever? Just uh just have you have you been tempted to come back to Twitter? Uh Every once in a while, I think about um, that that I had a lot of fun on Twitter sometimes, mm. and then I just remember how much work it was to maintain a Twitter <laughs> account, and I go, no. And you said, suckers, I'm going to go play my Retron. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I had a lot more time for, for gaming and for, uh, for reading and for watching movies and everything else I'm doing. Nice. Cooking, grilling. Cooking. Cool. All right. Well, uh, until next week, everybody have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. Just as the music dies. That was great timing on my part. Um, yeah. Anyway, later, everybody. <laughs> okay. I'll put the, I'll put the, we'll let, okay. Keep, keep going. See you. Do, 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 do,